Previously, behind the scenes, whilst not recording, I went and I installed TAC Life Support. I don't even know why I waited so long to do it. Immediately after installing it, I learned that my space station is going to run out of food, oxygen, uh, water in five days. Uh, hurried up and put together a quick and dirty little life support module. It weighs exactly one ton and, uh, you know, it'll feed them, it'll collect waste. And I learned that if once I install that thing, yeah, these my two crew guys will be good for like over a hundred days. So I'm happy about that. The complication is I also have at this point at the same time implemented a house rule where there's a limit on how often I can launch my rockets. Uh, it turns out that the next available launch under these house rules is in five days. Uh, it means that um, whenever I decide to launch my rocket, uh, yeah, here we go. we're going to put the put the life support module in good old Atlatl one and try to uh, schedule a, a to try, attempting to launch to rendezvous with the station, which is always just kind of a guess. Uh, they have less than a day's worth of, uh, of uh, supplies remaining. So here we are yeah, setting up the, the whole rendezvous and everything. Notice something kind of fishy over there in the lower right, the Delta V stats. What's this? 107 meters per second? Did I not in design this thing to have 500 meters per second of reserve Delta V? It doesn't have that. Uh, this was an issue with the previous probe. Hey, yeah, now we have <laughs> the mod works. We're getting all kinds of scary warnings <laughs> throwing up at us. I was like, hey, I thought we had more time in that. Look, oh, whiny, bunch of whining babies. You've got 14 hours left before you start choking on your own waste. Come on. Uh, so, yeah, we do the whole rendezvous, which uh, yeah, I'll say that the, the actual whole orbital rendezvous thing, that... That is one thing. I think I've got that pretty well figured out. And when using the at least the lighter weight spaceships, this whole docking business, that usually works out okay. So with, with all the ineptitude on display in the last episode, at least this part is working correctly. And besides, in my two Kerbals, they were never really in danger. The worst that could have happened is they may have had to uh, do a test run on those two uh, escape capsules, which I installed in the station previously for just that event. Any case, the delivery worked out just okay, uh, even with the really kind of surprising lack of overall Delta V to that uh, Dart 1. Now we will start working on live stuff and figure out what we're going to plan now. Okay, so this minor catastrophe was averted and we're now using TAC life support. Uh, so yeah, so these guys uh, consume resources, they produce waste. Uh, I'm going to leave Dart 1 just connected here with its tiny, tiny, small amounts of fuel remaining. And I'm just going to leave it connected there, you know, if for no other reason than here we'll have a way to, once this thing is full of waste, this will, we have a means of uh, getting rid of it. Because, yeah, Dart, Dart 1 has enough fuel remaining definitely to deorbit that, so it's good for something. <laughs> I am concerned about this, about the fact that where previously this design had been working uh, well, now all of a sudden it is not as capable. I'm honestly not certain how that happened. I think maybe it was in some of this incredible collection of uh, this uh, you know, hash of mods that I have installed that maybe one thing wasn't updated and I did something wrong. In any case, the... The Atlatl 1, it has to be redesigned. I've already went ahead and did a little bit of this behind the scenes, and we'll just call it Atlatl 01B. We got rid of the liquid fuel boosters. Instead of two liquid fuel boosters, we're doing, I'm sorry, instead of four liquid fuel boosters, we're doing two solids. Um, yeah, yeah, so, and I think we have some acceptable numbers that we're looking for performance wise out of those. Hmm. Okay. And oh, let me see, what's the other thing that I want to talk about? Let's pull this up here. I decided, yeah, I was talking like the last video that I was uh, wanting to house rule some limitations uh, on, on this. And here's what I've come up with. Rockets are available and schedule corresponding to lifting capacity. You can see the chart here. One, uh, uh, I, I envision that each different class of lifter has its own, say, like if, if it's not its own separate vehicle assembly building, then it's you know its own separate little sub installation. We, I mean, we got these rooms off to the side and stuff, or we did. I guess that was the previous version. I don't even remember which version of the room, the building we have. <laughs> 
In any case, yeah, every five days they can put one of these Atlatl 1s together. The, uh, we only have one launch pad. It takes time to reset from just, again, one day for the little guy. If we get uh, these really big lifters, it could take up to a week. I also, what I want to do here, uh, remote tech has long interested me. I like the fact that yeah, you give you a reason to launch communication satellites. However, I think that I'm not actually going to install the mod. Uh, I'm just going to um, uh, I'm, I'm going to start setting up some communication satellites around and and choose not to uh, send probes anymore. Uh, yeah, send any more probes to uh, you know other other bodies. Uh, without, uh, unless we have some uh, communication set up where they can uh, talk to Kerbin. Uh, you know, I figure anywhere around Kerbin space, yeah, I, I figure we got radios all over the surface of Kerbin. And our previous two probes that went to the moon and went to the Minmus, those were using like advanced computers and they were extra smart and they cost a bazillion dollars. And now they're gone. Speaking of, speaking of, yeah, we have to look at this. Something happened. Something happened to uh to the minmus lander here is minmus it has no lander the probe is not there it's gone either minmus ate it or the minmuslings came out of the their holes in the ground and they took it down into their caves and they're currently conducting experiments on, on it in order to find out about life on kerbin or it was a probe for the probe god you know, as a uh, sacrifice, an offering. I don't know. It's a mystery. The thing's gone. Uh, other things are working. I get unknown objects again now. We've got this guy. We've got... Oh, I, I, oh, I had an idea. I had an idea. Well, first off, we go to this and take a look. This is a, actually one that we tracked earlier. Who's going to be doing a, a U-turn. Uh, it's like a 5 million meter. Kind of like, what's that? Like 5,000 kilometer. Uh, as his closest approach to Kerbin. And he's going to go slinging out again. Uh, I actually thought of something. Earlier I said I was going to totally ignore these rocks. I got an idea. See, we have this rock, which has, was in a stable orbit around Kerbin. And the periapsis actually dips down here, sort of close to some of the stuff that I do. Um, this rock bugs me. It's in a stable orbit. So it's not going to leave. It's going to be here every time. Every time I open up the map, I have to go here and I have to click the, uh, yeah, click that thing in order to get rid of that orbital track. So I want to get rid of it. Uh, I'm personally not interested in building a space station uh, out of rocks or building a uh, or doing these other weird things I see people doing with the rocks. I don't want the rock around here. I want it gone. So at some point in the future. I mean, we got time. The thing's in a stable orbit. Uh, we're going to uh, attempt to, to uh, dock some uh, <laughs> dock, dock some fuel tanks and engines to that thing, and we'll start burning every time it passes the periapsis. See how much thrust it takes in order to uh, get this rock to reach escape velocity and get rid of it so I can stop looking at it every time I open up the map. That's my goal. Speaking of, what is this new one? We've got, we have an unknown in here. What's going on with this guy? That's um, unknown. Let's track object. Let me see. He goes way over here. He does. Yeah, he's not even. Nah, he's not even worth looking at. Yes, stop tracking. Thank you. Okay, so we've got a couple of interesting rocks. We've got one that's doing that U turn and one in the stable orbit. I want to get rid of all of them. Okay, that that's all. That's a whole bunch of kind of kind of maintenance stuff and the plans um here's what i actually want to work on now um i was talking earlier see i wanted i want to do a, to put together another moon lander however this conflicts with my house rule setup of having to do the uh, uh, uh remote tech like uh communication networks i am definitely not ready to do a manned landing yet Therefore, the thing that I want to do here, actually, I suppose I need to get to the space station in order to set up the planning for this. I want to do a manned flyby 
of the moon. Uh, I want to take one of these guys who's at my station. Probably Tabular Ken has the seniority in the space program at the moment. Uh, I want Tabular Ken to get into one of our little canary capsules. That's what I decided to call the, 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 the one man. I decided to name him after birds because I name all kinds of stuff after birds. Uh, the big ones are pigeons. And so, yeah, this is a, this is a canary capsule. I want Tabular Ken to get into one of these. I want him to, uh, we're going to dock this thing to, um, you know, probably not a Dart 1, probably a Dart 5. Most likely, we have to do a bunch of math and figure this out. We figure out how much fuel he takes. And I want Tabular Ken to ride that thing out of Kerbin orbit. I want him to go and circle around the moon. We probably don't even have to go into orbit around the moon. When we'll start looking at some delta V numbers and stuff. Uh, and then I want him to come back to Kerbin. Uh, and so he'll go and he'll have a good look and he'll take lots of pictures and all kinds of crazy stuff like this. And this will be, uh, again, you know, some good practice in, in setting up some missions using a maneuver node system in the rescaled system. Uh, yeah, I think, I think this is a good next step. My, yeah, my plan is probably, yeah, we'll use Dart 5. And obviously we have to give him some food and water and air. Uh, and come back and... Maybe not necessarily set up directly for a free return, especially, yeah, you know, especially since we haven't tested one of these and doing a re a, 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 any a regular return, yeah, a regular deorbit reentry. <laughs> All right, Tabular Ken, you up to it? Seems okay. Conrad Kaplonk, he's up to it. Maybe he wants to go. No, 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 it's Ken. Ken's got the seniority. Okay, so. It is maneuver node time. I want to just go ahead and start figuring that out. Set that up. I don't feel a need to record all that slow, boring stuff. So, yeah, we'll come back in a bit. Okay. I played with maneuver nodes and stuff. I think we got a plan. Uh, I think we got a plan. The really nifty thing about doing this kind of stuff and you know, going up with the rescaled system and putting things into a close to a realistic size, although I'm not all the way to a realistic size, but, you know, closer uh, you start doing this planning you you've realized why those Apollo dudes did it the way they did uh, so here's the plan we're gonna start at uh, you know 200 kilometer orbit or parking orbit I suppose you call that and our first burn is gonna be right around 2300 meters per second of Delta V uh, we'll get do this time it right we'll sweep up around here and we'll come down to can we zoom the camera in can we zoom the camera in can we close the calculator Calculator, close. Get out of here, get out, go, go away. Yeah. And yeah, we'll come in and we'll sweep around the moon, just do one quick loop around. Uh, it, it turns out the actual altitude that we're aiming for, see I wrote over here 87 kilometers, because the first time I set it up, that's what I came up with. The, the actual number there, really, really tiny finicky. We can do tiny little burns and corrections here. Still, it looks like we're looping way out too far, but it, this is just the way it works out. Yeah, we'll do one quick loop. It's uh, interesting to note that at our lowest approach is whenever we'll be facing uh, Kerbin. So, you know, we'll be able to talk to Kerbin and tell him what we see. Uh, then we sweep back out around and come down and, you know, still just coasting on, on the, in the inertia from that one burn. Uh, it, it is possible to set our periapsis oh, this time. Perhaps just move slightly. I did have it set to where it, you can just barely re-enter. I'm, I'm figuring that we can uh, re-enter here. 70, that's, we don't have to be so precise. We just want to our, aim for a curb and periapsis. Uh, yeah, between... We, I suppose we probably... I'm just guessing here with previous experience with deadly re-entry. Uh, about... Yeah. But anywhere, pro anywhere between 60 and 80 kilometers would probably work. Uh, I know that the vehicle I'm planning on using, it has its own uh, Delta V reserve and the, the, the engines that are attached in the service module for the pod itself. But it'll be in a combination of aero braking and burning, we can, uh, you know, even if we don't just immediately re-enter then, it's difficult to judge exactly how much we'll slow down. Then it'll continue to sweep around and we'll definitely have a re-entry after that. So, yeah. We'll pack enough Mountain Dew and sandwiches for a four-day trip and total, uh, give ourselves a generous budget, 3,200 total Delta V. That's the plan. So let's start putting the vehicle together, huh? All right. So first thing we have um, is the Canary Capsule. Load this one up. 
because this is what Tabular Ken is going to be writing in. Uh, we have one small complication in that whenever this vehicle was put together, uh, this was before we, our scientists discovered that Kerbals need to eat. A Kerbal consumes one unit of each one of these per day, for a 24 hour day, which is what I'm using in my game. So, uh, let's, let's give them, uh, since it costs almost nothing, let's go ahead and give them a supply of 10 days, just as we, the part is slightly larger, enough to work with, <laughs> just barely big enough to click on. Let's go to sub-assemblies. I have over here previously saved up Dart 5, which is my largest orbital vehicle in use at the moment. You know what? This thing needs another docking port. Let's let's just see what happens. We just have this on here. We can we can estimate some other things later. Let's pull open my mech jab, my delta V stats, and close that one. Okay, and get get our staging all set up correctly. So let me see. I'm looking for a total of 3,195 total delta V. This in this transfer stage has got 3,060 which is more than enough for my, my total burn that I want to do with significant amounts left over. Uh, total for the entire vehicle, 3,489. See, there's some uh, it's, uh, the supply just in these engines up here. I'm thinking that he can aero break just, you know, in, with these engines. Okay, okay, wow. How about that, huh? Uh, here's the obvious solution. Uh, we'll have a modified dart do. Put that away. Stick it onto there. So yeah, it'll have some of the, uh, you know, the food and the, and the waste management and stuff just attached directly into the top of Dart. Yeah, so the trick will be getting this thing, getting, uh, you know, getting the, the Dart 5 module up there full of fuel for this mission. So my plan is, you know, for our schedule of what rockets become available over the next next several days, we're just going to be launching uh, simple tanks of fuel until, you know, and we'll just see it. It should take just a few to, to, to fill it up. I honestly didn't think it would be that simple, but apparently it is. Yeah, okay. So the next launch we're going to have in Lattel 2.5 is going to be available. I... Uh, didn't have any designated payload already in mind for that. That happens in three days. We get another uh, Atlatl 01 Bravo. So yeah, the next thing that we're going to launch will be Atlatl 2.5 with a, a two and a half tons of fuel tank and docking ports. And that, that will be all there is to the payload.